Salamanders come in all shapes and sizes, from the stout and terrestrial adult ambistomids to the elongate and fully aquatic amphiumas. In most cases, salamanders spend at least the juvenile stage of their life in the water, but eventually develop legs and lungs and make the big move onto land. However, there are a few species which defy this popular reproductive model. Many plethodons, for instance, give birth to live young in moist substrate, and newts, well, newts are just plain weird. In this episode of The Wild Report, we'll learn all about these amazing animals, from their unique adaptations to their completely unorthodox reproductive strategy. So we head out to a man-made pond where newts are known to breed, and hope for the best. All right, sweet. There we go. We got one. Oh, that's actually a male. No way. That is perfect. All right, let's check it out. Get him out. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. Now this is the eastern spotted newt, one of the coolest little salamanders that you can find in North Carolina in the winter. This one is a male, and there's a couple ways you can tell that. For one thing, you can see that tail. It's very rudder-like. Now, all newts have that rudder-like tail because it helps them swim. Uh, but males, it's even thicker and broader than the females. And then if we flip him over, we can see he has that inflated ventral area right there. And these feet, which he's currently grabbing me with, are quite a bit bulkier. And you have those kind of black pads on the leg area. And this is what he uses to grip the female, just like that Dorgan plexus. Now, all of these newts are in this pond right now for one reason, and that is to breed. These are winter breeding amphibians. They do that for a couple of reasons, uh, but during the warm rains, kind of in January, February, here in North Carolina, these guys come out by the hundreds, if not thousands, and they'll all travel to these suitable places to breed. Now, in more natural areas, they're gonna be traveling mostly to ephemeral wetlands. So these are kind of wet areas that fill up during the winter so they don't have fish all year round. Uh, and they'll go there to breed and deposit their eggs. But obviously, this kind of is a, is a man-made version of an ephemeral wetland, which is why these newts are coming here. Now this is the adult stage of the newt. And it, it looks pretty typical for a salamander. You have, you know, just the four legs, the tail, and um, no gills or external gills or anything like that on this individual. But what you might not know about newts is they actually go through a three-stage life cycle just like uh, frogs, like you might be familiar with. So they'll incubate in eggs in these ponds for a couple months. Now, it depends on temperature and things like that. Once they hatch, they're in a small larval stage where they actually do have little external gills. Um, and they'll stay as larvae for a few more months until they'll emerge from the water as Fs. Now, Fs are completely terrestrial, uh, and I don't, I've never actually found one, but I will show you some photos right now. They're really, really pretty during that mid-stage. Well, as it turns out, after editing this video, I did find a red eft and was able to film it in the wild. All right, guys, check it out. Look at this amazing animal right here. This is the Eastern Newt, Nodophthalmus. Oh, he's tiny, tiny, tiny. Nodophthalmus viridescens. Now, this is actually the terrestrial stage of the, the newt. So normally with salamanders, newts are just salamanders, what you have is aquatic larvae, and then those aquatic larvae become terrestrial adults. Newts are different. You do have aquatic larvae, but then they come on land, they live out the terrestrial stage here as a red eft, which is what this guy is called. But he will eventually migrate right back down to the water to lay his eggs. Now this one is absolutely stunning. You see we have that kind of aposematic coloration going on, we have like a darker orange on the body and these really bright red to orange spots. And that is telling you that actually he is toxic. So newts are toxic. They do secrete very mild um, toxins in their skin. It is not enough to do anything to a human being like me. And I'm not at any risk by holding him, but it's not like a bullfrog or snake were to grab a hold of him and swallow him. Those toxins are actually strong enough to kill that predator, which is pretty incredible. Now, aquatic adults like this, they do have lungs, so he can breathe right now, don't worry. But also, they can exchange gas through their skin, just like most other salamanders. Uh, so they can actually use both methods to get air if they need it. Now, when they migrate to these pools, 
Uh, males are going to do this kind of little dance to try and attract females. They're going to wave their tail around and they're really going to show off those beautiful spots that they have and try to attract a female. When one comes around, they're going to group her with those back legs. Uh, they'll enter amplexus and then after amplexus, when breeding is completed, they'll deposit the eggs throughout the pond. They'll attach them to the leaf matter in the bottom of the pond. And uh, hopefully, if they've picked a good place to breed, no fish or anything will eat those eggs. Now these are really important for the ecosystem for a couple of different reasons. The most applicable to humans though, is that as they're aquatic adults and as aquatic larvae, they're doing a lot of preying on aquatic insects. So mosquito larvae, for instance, especially in the spring, you know, there's a nose drip. Especially in the spring, mosquito larvae are gonna make up a large part of the newt's diet. So for those of you who don't like mosquitoes biting you all the time, which is also me, these are helping to control mosquito populations. Um, but also lots of other aquatic invertebrates are consumed by these guys. And also they are a excellent protein source for lots of different animals. Obviously they're pretty small and pretty defenseless. Um, they don't have teeth or claws or anything to defend themselves. So many fish, birds, reptiles, really anything that can catch them will eat them. However, they do secrete a mildly toxic compound from their skin, which is not enough to do anything to human beings, but it might make a frog or a fish think twice before eating one of these animals. But they're so cool. I love their spot patterns. I think they're just really gorgeous salamanders. But we don't want them to get too dry, so we'll come back right now. Now the cool thing about newts that's different than most salamanders you find is that they are highly adapted for swimming. So as soon as I put them back, you'll see that tail come into action and they can swim very, very fast, much faster than they can move on land. And they use that powerful tail, just like you're seeing here, to repel themselves through the water. And as soon as he's back there, you can see how well he blends in. All right, everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the Easter Newt. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, for photos and video clips from my adventures, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at The Wild Report. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.